when the sermon slide comes up, just leave it up, please. Okay. Thank you. Because it's worth taking in. <laughs> we might not listen to you. That's all right. <laughs> Leslie is fantastic. I'll just say it before it even happens. So. The second scripture reading for this morning continues in the book of 2 Kings in the 23rd chapter, now moving into the 21st verse. The king commanded all the people, keep the Passover to the Lord your God as prescribed in this book of the covenant. No such Passover had been kept since the days of the judges who judged Israel, or during all the days of the kings of Israel or of the kings of Judah. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, this Passover was kept to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, Josiah put away the mediums, wizards, teraphim, idols, and all the abominations that were seen in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, so that he established the words of the law that were written in the book that the priest Hilkiah had found in the house of the Lord. Before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his might, according to the law of Moses, nor did any like him arise after him. Still the Lord did not turn from the fierceness of his great wrath, by which his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations with which Manasseh had provoked him. The Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as I have removed Israel. And I will reject this city that I have chosen, Jerusalem, and the house of which I said, My name shall be called there. May God's blessings continue to rest upon the experiences of Scripture. May it guide the meditations of our hearts in the words of my lips. It's brilliant. Love the symbolism. It is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Needle in a haystack, yes. I totally can find that needle. I mean, this is a debate. I mean, how did we not see the needle? <clears throat> this section of scripture actually touches on that. And this is sort of one of those places where I'm just going to call it a work of the spirit that Leslie stumbled across this image when she was doing her search. And she thought she was being funny, which it is hilarious, by the way, to have this image come up. But it was the thing that sort of started to provoke and inspire and bring about something that felt like a message that was coming out of this text. Because this particular reading, this 23rd chapter of 2 Kings, is about a king, Josiah, who is trying to reform. Right? He's trying to renew. He has looked around and he has said there is something Amiss. Now, the prophets have been saying there are things amiss for quite a while. We've had some other kings that, according to the book of Kings, first and second, as well as Chronicles, first and second, have not been very good kings. They've been uh, sometimes called the worst that there ever was sort of things. And we as humans like to say this is the best that ever was or the worst that ever was. And we've had some pretty bad kings, according to the book of Kings. So Josiah comes along and he is young when he ascends to the throne. And he says, you know, we got some real problems going on. We need, to, we need to fix, we need to figure out what the issue is, and then we need to figure out the solution to the issue. Something is obviously amiss. And when things are amiss, we turn to the things that seem to be obvious solutions first and foremost. And so King Josiah looks around and he says, you know, the temple is not in a good way. And since we believe, ancient Judaism at this moment believed that the temple was the seat of worship. It was the place where you go and commune most directly with the living and loving God. It is the place of sacrifice. It is where the priests did what they did. It was the Holy of Holies and the Ark of the Covenant and the whole nine yards. Then the temple needed to be lovingly worked on. And it seems that when they were cleaning, you find all kinds of fun stuff when you clean, by the way. All kinds of fun stuff. 
You know at the bottom of downspouts, you usually put those little concrete blocks to help sort of funnel water away. It's like closed at one side and open at the other, so the water comes in the closed side and goes out the open side. Yeah, we found that a lot of them here are turned the other way. <laughs> water comes back in. You find all kinds of stuff when you're cleaning, when you start to sort and go through. Sometimes it's a, it's a painful sorting, isn't it, when we start to go through. Sometimes it's, it's the sorting that happens when, when we're moving or changing or we're taking care of a loved one's house. There's these things that come up and they trigger memories. Uh, it's the season now where we're getting up into attics and pulling down Christmas stuff that we haven't looked at in a year or more. You find stuff when you clean. Something is obviously amiss. Josiah says there's, there's, there's something unhealthy in the land and with the people. There's something obviously amiss. So let's begin by cleaning house because I know that the house needs to be cleaned. And when they're cleaning the house, we are told that, bless you, one of the priests comes out and has found a book, a scroll. You find the book. And as we are wont to do, we sit and read the books. I just assembled an Ikea bookshelf up in our bedroom. And so I've had boxes that moved up with us a year and a half plus and started going through them. And there was the dust we brought with us. Very nice, you know, <laughs> old dust, new house. But there were those books. Said, oh, wow, that book. I remember that. I, I meant to read this book two years ago. Let me sit and start to read and then you get into those sorts of books and you start finding things like oh, oh i didn't know and that's what happens here the priest comes out the book is read king josiah says claude have mercy it's not just that something's amiss. We have wandered astray from God. We have been led astray from God. We have changed who we are as the people of God because we were afraid or we were influenced by an empire. The Assyrian Empire most likely, is the one that we're talking about. The empire that destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. Yeah, that'll get your attention, won't it? Ten tribes scattered and the political entity is gone from the face of the planet, it seems. They read the scroll. And this is one of the earliest instances, if not the first instance in Scripture of People turning back to Scripture. We talked about this in Daniel as well. But this is one of the earliest ones of people looking at Scripture and going, oh my goodness. Not only is there something amiss, but we have wandered. We have been led. We have been influenced by fear and by the, inf by the, the temptations of the state around us. And so Josiah says, we need to get our acts together. It's not just enough now to clean and paint and rebuild the temple precincts. He says, we've got to get things together. He says, look what I found. He does kind of take credit for finding it. It's, you know, he's the king, right? Look what I found. We think that this book that was found is actually part of the book of Deuteronomy. Chapters 12 to 26. It's a section of teachings that are about rebuilding worship. Centralizing it in Jerusalem again. A section of teachings that warn about being distracted by other idols and superstitions. It's a section of teaching that says... We shouldn't be sacrificing children or consulting mediums or wizards. And so suddenly when Josiah has been saying there's something amiss, I can't quite put my finger on it. He is presented with the needle in the haystack. And it's kind of obvious when it comes down to it, 
when we sit and reflect on what has been, when he says we need to get back to the laws of Moses, especially the ten best teachings, it's pretty big needle. They've been in the center of community and worship for, well, since the beginning of the community and worship in the Exodus period, and yet they had managed to wander away because this is what we do as human beings. The familiar can become the background. And so we forget why we celebrate communion weekly. We forget why we choose to immerse and proclaim a, a single baptism for the forgiveness of skins, sins. We forget why we enter covenant relationships, not just as a congregation, but as a region and as a general church. We, we forget because they fade into the background. We pull them out once a year, and then we pack them up again. Look what I found. The Sunday school class, 1416, has actually been studying a, a book they've been suffering through. I've been leading them <laughs> um, through a, a, a new book. Um, the author's name are, are Kinnaman and Lynn. And they've pointed out that we as Christian church disciples, we don't have deep traditions or histories or, or church structure, uh, doctrines or dogmas to, to give us a specific way of being, right? We, we don't have those sorts of things to tell us how to be church and how to be people of faith. And so they argue that we need to be, more than anything else, we need to be a people of the book, meaning scripture. Because I think, I think we can feel that there's something amiss, something not quite right, there's something Something that's sort of stirring. There's a, a possibility. There's a, there's a feeling. It's, like, it's, it's, it's hard to put our finger on exactly what it is. Trying to describe it can be like finding that needle in the haystack. And then, and then all of a sudden, we have that, that moment. Because in the absence of the potentially important tools of faith that are deep histories and traditions and church structure and doctrine and dogma and all those sorts of things. In the absence of those things, we turn ourselves to scripture and freedom of thought, the drive for unity and a profound sense of mission and, mission, uh, and ministries. And then we say, well, where do we find those? How do we, how do we describe those sorts of things? And, oh, look what I found. It's been hiding in a back room, in a closet, in the dark recesses of my mind. It's been lurking somewhere deep in my heart, and I haven't been able to put my finger on it because I thought it was so hard to pin down. And yet there it is. It's like when someone asks you that Jeopardy question, you can't quite come up with the answer, and then when they give it to you, oh, jeez, I knew that all the time. When Josiah brings the book out and offers the reforms and says we need to be about this sort of thing, he's not reinventing the wheel at all. He's not proposing anything that has not been done, but he is drawing attention back. He is saying, hmm, the things that had been have fallen into the background. We have become a distracted sort of people. And I think we, as we go around and feel that mm, there is just, there's, there's something, there's, we can't quite put a pin in it to, to, to be able to name it what it is, I think we find that as we continue to delve into Scripture, as we attempt to recapture some sense of freedom of thought with the responsibility to think as we begin to strive even more to be this structure for unity this church that love is building as we develop this profound sense of mission and ministry even more than what has been we too will be like king josiah look what we found Church. Church today. 
Thanks be to God. And amen.